All right, welcome everybody. Let's do the first bunch of problems for the practice test and we'll finish up tomorrow night. All right, here we go. For each of the variables described below, indicate whether it is quantitative or categorical var variable and indicate its level of measurement. So we'll start with playing time in seconds of a DVD. Oops, one second. There we go. And that is going to be quantitative. And that is going to be ratio. If you remember, ratio is uh, where there is a, um, a, a natural zero, as well as the, um, the ratios are meaningful, meaning uh, the, the playing time for you was twice as long as it was for me. So that, that's a meaningful ratio. Name of cell phone service provider. That is going to be categorical. Because numbers don't really play a part of that. And that's going to be nominal, specifically because um, there is no order for the, the name of cell phone providers. Dosage in milligrams of medication. That, again, is going to be quantitative. And that is going to be ratio. And um, I'm just going to keep going. If you need to stop me or you have a question or something like that, just um, unmic yourself. I'm not on a screen where I can see the chat. So if you do want my attention, you'll, you'll need to speak up, please. All right. For each variable, determine with, whether it is best thought of as discrete or continuous. The amount of coffee in a cup dispensed by a coin-operated coffee machine. That is continuous. The number of occupied tables at Zito's Cafe at 8 p.m. next Friday. That is discrete. That is countable. The total number of goals scored by a soccer team in a season. That's also going to be discrete. And the total snowfall amount in Minneapolis this year. That is going to be continuous. Remember, measurable and countable are two different things. All right, the organizers of a conference want to survey attendees about the registration fee. Which of the following best describes a systematic sample of attendees? The organizers take a list of attendees and select every sixth attendee until 54 attendees are selected. That is systematic. Part B. Excuse me. A chemist out of pharmaceutical pharmaceutical company wants to test the quality of a new batch of microscopes, which of the following best describes a random sample of microscopes. The chemist takes a list of the microscopes and selects every fourth mic no, that's systematic. The microscopes in the first shipment that was received are easily accessible, so he selects all 80 of the microscopes in the shipment. That's convenience. The chemist assigns each microscope a different number using a random number table and so on. That one is definitely the, the okay. random. All right, in part C, counselors at a college want to poll students about how much time the students spend studying. Which of the following best describes cluster sample? Remember, a cluster sample is when um, there's a bunch of groups and we select some of the groups and test everything in each of the groups. First choice, the counselors use a computer program to draw 56 students at random and select these students. Every set of 56 students is equally like, okay, that's a random. Counselors form groups of eight students based on the students' majors. Then the counselors select all of the students in seven of the randomly. That is definitely a cluster. Whoa. All right. All right, hey, buddy. All right, um, I'm going to put this into a list because I need it put in order.
All right. So I'm going to sort this stat sort list one. You know, I'll come back to that in a moment. Actually, I want to see how large the biggest number is. 13 is the largest. So I'm going to mark this up starting at, it says start at 2.5 and plus width of two. So that's going to be 4.5, 6.5, 8.5. Ten point five. So this isn't enough. We need more. Twelve point five. And then fourteen point five. All right. So let's get our data here. Between three and four, there's one, two, three, four, five, it looks like. In between five and six, one, two, three, only three there. In between seven and eight, one, two, three, four, it looks like. In between nine and 10, so one, two, three, four again, looks like. And from 11 to 12, one, two, three, four, five, six. And between 13 and 14, there's just one. All right. So we're going to do a line plot. So what I always call the dot plot. Nine, three, seven, nine, three, nine, three. Of course, this would be a lot easier for you because um, you'll be on a computer. A group of seven students was asked, how many hours did you watch television last week? Here are their responses. Find the mean. I'm going to do the mean the old fashioned way. And we're going to divide that by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It says run to the nearest tenth. So it's going to be twelve point four hours. Question seven. Red blood cell counts of healthy adult measured on six days are as follows. Find the standard deviation. I'm going to use a list for this. So I'm going to run one var stats. So I'm going to go to stat, calculate up at the top, one var stats on list one. And my standard deviation is 2.37, it looks like.
All right, moving on to the empirical rule. The scores on standardized tests for a certain year are modeled using a normal distribution shown below. The mean of the distribution is 72.4, so 72.4. And the standard deviation is 5.5 points. Now, I need to keep adding standard deviations until I get something between 80 and 85, and then subtract them until I get something between 60 and 65. So 72.4 plus 5.5, that is not enough. So let's add another standard deviation. There we are, 83.4. And to be clear, we are two standard deviations away. Let's go the other direction now. 72.4 minus 5.5. That is not between 60 and 65, so one more, minus 5.5. There we are, 61.4. And again, we are clearly two standard deviations out, which tells us that total area under the curve is 95%. So remember, one standard deviation out is 68%, two out are 95, three out are 99.7. All right. Pablo and Josh each graduated from college last year and got entry-level positions. Last year, the uh, distributions of entry-level salaries were, okay, clearly bell-shaped. This is important. If it says skewed, then the answer automatically is it's unclear. That year, the entry level uh, salaries of teachers had a population uh, mean of $68,000 and a standard deviation of $2,100. And the entry level salaries of writers had a population mean of $59,000 and a standard deviation of $2,250. Last year, Pablo got an entry level position as a teacher with a salary of $65,607, and Josh got an entry level position as a writer with a salary of $54,000. $812. So let's find our z-scores. See some Pablo. And Pablo is 65,607 minus the mean, which is 68,000. Divided by the standard deviation, which is 2,100. 65. Six five minus three. It said run to two decimal points. And then next up we have the Z score for Josh. And Josh got entry level at fifty four thousand. 812 minus the 59,000. Over the 2250. So about negative 1.86. All right. Do, um, Professor, do we have, um, are we able to do the fraction like divided by 2250 on the same line or does it have to be after you've already done the mite like 58? Let's see. <laughs> okay. That looks very different to me. Yes. <laughs> okay. You could use parentheses. In, in the numerator, but no, I, I, I don't like doing that. All right, second part. Who got a higher salary? Well, it's in this case, whoever's going to be closer to the mean, meaning zero, and that's definitely Pablo. All right. Number 10. 
Selma asked 15 students how many courses they've taken so far at her college. Here's a list of answers. Uh, what is the percentage of students who have taken fewer than five courses? All right, so let's, I need to sort this list. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and sort that. All right, and we wanna know fewer than five courses. There's a total of 15 and fewer than five, I'm only seeing three, the one, the three, the four are less than five. So that means that's going to be three out of the 15. Which is 20%. All right. All right, we are now to doing a box and whisker plot. So let's go ahead and put this data into list one. All right, so we have our 20 pieces of data here. I'm going to sort this list. That will make it easier. And now I'm going to run one var stats. And I'm interested in this information. So the minimum, first quartile, median, third quartile, and the maximum. Minimum in this case is 15, 35, 40.5, 46, and 57. All right, I also need to find my IQR. If you recall, that's Q3 minus Q1. Which is 11. Now my lower fence, remember that's Q sub 1 minus 1. 1.5 times the IQR. Which is 35 minus 1.5 times 11. Eighteen point five in my upper fence is Q sub three plus 1.5 times the IQR. Q3 
it's 62.5. All right, let's see if we have any outliers. Do we have anything below 18 and a half? We do. We have outliers. A 15 and 16. Let's see if we have any values that are above 62.5. We do not. So these are our only outliers, which means 15 is now out. What's the smallest number that's above 18 and a half? That's going to be 23. All right, let's put down our outliers. That's at 15. And it's 16. And now we're going to start at 35, at uh, 23, pardon me. So 20, 23. And then we have 35, 40 and a half. Forty six, and fifty seven. There you have it. Box and whisker plot with outliers. Make sure you check for the outliers. All right, any questions there? I see. All right. Next up, I think we're into probability now. Yep. A bag with eight marbles is shown below. Four marbles are blue, three are yellow, one is red. A marble is chosen from the bag at random. What is the probability that it is blue? So the probability blue. My denominator is eight for sure. And how many of them are blue? Four of them are. Now you can reduce that to one half if you want, but you don't need to. We can just leave it as four eighths. Martina is going to watch a movie in, in her collection. She has 10 action movies, eight comedies, uh, five comedies, eight dramas. She will randomly select one movie. What is the probability that the movie she selects is not a drama? So probability not drama. All right, so how many movies does she have overall? Yeah. Yeah. Haley, your mic was on a second ago. Oh, it's still on Haley. Sorry. That's okay. If you have a question, you can certainly unmic yourself. Okay, so our denominator is, oh, I didn't finish adding it up. I believe that's 23. And how many of them are not dramas? That's gonna be 10 plus the five. So that's gonna be 15 over 23. All right, a spinner with 10 equally sized slices has four red slices, four yellow slices, and two blue slices. Deborah spun the dial 500 times and got the following results. 209 red, 186 yellow, and 105 blue. All right, from Deborah's results, uh, what's the probability of landing on blue or yellow? Excuse me. All right. Probability of blue or yellow. So that's going to be the 186 plus 105. Uh, let's do this elsewhere. So part A. Probability blue or yellow. That's 500 down below. 
and we have blue or yellow is going to be 186 plus 105. Six plus no five divided by five hundred. All right, part B. Assuming the, the spinner is fair, compute the theoretical probability of landing on a blue or yellow. Um, so there are, what was it, 10, 10. And how many of them are blue or yellow? So one, two, three, four, five, six are. Oh, come on. In part C, assuming the spinner is fair, choose the statement below that is true. With a large number of spins, there might be a difference between the experimental and theoretical probabilities, but the difference should, will, should be small. That's, that's exactly correct. Uh, with a large number of spins, there must be a large difference now. With a large number of spins, there must be no difference now. That's not true. It's definitely the first choice. A pet store surveyed 177 people to see how many own a cat and how many own a bird. We have the Venn diagram below. How many people do not own a cat? Uh, that's going to be 38 plus 27. So that's going to be 65 people. How many people own a cat or a bird or both? I think owning a bird and a cat just sounds like a really bad idea. I'm getting 150. How many people own a cat but do not own a bird? That's just the, the uh, 29 there. What's the 27 again? 27 are the people that don't have a cat or a bird. Okay, good. All right. All right. All right, number 16, a tile is selected from seven tiles each labeled with a different letter from the first seven letters of the alphabet. Let's write out our samples, entire sample space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So that's our whole sample space there. Event X is the letter selected becomes that comes before E. So event X is A, B, C, and D. Event Y is the letter select, uh, selected is found in the word face. I'm going to rewrite this in alphabetical order. There we have it. In part A, event X or Y. So that's inclusive of everybody. So A, B, C, D, E, and F.
Part B is event X and Y. So that's only the ones that are in both. That's going to be A is in both and C is in both. And part C, the complement of event X. So X was A, B, C, D. So the complement is going to be E, F, G. Any questions? Should add a fish for fun. Haley, you're just too fun. <laughs> All right. Number 17. At a factory that produces pistons for cars, machine one produced 790 satisfactory pistons and 210 unsatisfactory today. Machine two produced 707 satisfactory pistons and 303 unsatisfactory pistons today. Suppose that one piston from machine one and one piston from machine two is chosen at random from today's batch. What is the probability that the piston chosen from machine one is satisfactory and the piston chosen from machine two is not? Okay. So let's start here. How many pistons were made total by machine one? That's 790 plus 210. I believe that's exactly 1,000. Machine two produce 707 plus 303, which gives us 1010. All right, so what is the probability machine one was satisfactory and machine two unsatisfactory? Well, for a satisfactory machine one, that's gonna be 790 out of a thousand. And unsatisfactory machine two, that's 303 out of 1010. And it says, do not round your answer. So 790 times 303 divided by 1,000 times 1010. So a little over, almost 24% chance that you would get this combination. A university class has 26 students, 12 are psychology, nine are history, five are art. The professor is planning to select two students for a demonstration. The first student will be selected at random and the second student will be selected at random of the remaining students. This means no replacement. What is the probability that the first student selected is a history major and the second student is an art major? All right, so if the first one is history, there are nine history majors out of the 26. But now that that history major has been chosen, there's now only 25 people total to choose from. And how many art majors are there? There are five. So let's see what we get. Zero point zero six nine. Okay, keep going. A local high school has both male and female students. Each student either plays a sport or doesn't. Here's our two-way top table, sometimes called a um, contingency table. All right, so let's start here, part A. Probability female. 
So the bottom will be 80. And how many females are there? There's 12 plus 36. That's going to be 48. Eight divided by 80. Meaning 60% of these people are female. Part B. Sport and female. Again, that'll be out of the 80. Sport and female, that's 36. All right, in part C, probability sport, given that she's female. This is going to be the number of sport and female over the number of females. So sport and female, that's the 36. And the total number of females we decided was 48. All right. Question 20. All right, and very quickly for this one, I, I did this one earlier. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and find the totals here. So 45 plus 26 plus 14 plus 16. 31 plus 20. All right, I think this will make things go a little easier. Round your answer to 100th. Okay, here we go. Probability the student is male or sophomore. Uh, I need more space for this one. This is the general counting rule. All right, so this is going to be 101 over 193 plus 46 over 193 minus sophomore male, that's 26, of What is the probability that the student is female? How many females are there? 92. Professor? Yeah. Can you do one that says, given the probability the female was, the student was a female, 
given it was a junior, for example, I get confused on that one. So let's say probability female. Hmm. Let's see. Given that it was a junior. Probably a junior. Yeah. Given that it's female. Okay. So this is going to be the number of junior females. Over the number of females. Okay. That helps. I get a little backwards on these ones when it comes to the given part. Yeah. So that would be junior females is 22. And okay. the total females is 92. Got it. Thank you. Certainly. We are to counting. Monroe High School is going to select a committee. The committee will have a faculty member, a male student, female student, and a parent. So how many different committee positions are there going to be? Well, there's three faculty members, four male students, four female students, and four parents. These are all multiplies. So this is going to be three times four raised to the third power. 192 committees. Twenty two. To log on to a certain computer account, the user must type in a five letter password. In such a password, no letter may be repeated, and only the lowercase of the letter may be used. How many such five letter passwords are possible? So this is the order does matter in this case. So this is going to be twenty six. Twenty six permutation five. All right, part B, 60 athletes are running a race. A gold medal is given to the winner, silver to the second place, and uh, bronze to the third. How many possible three medals can be distributed? That is going to be 60 permutation three, because again, the order matters for this one. Damn it. All right. So the order for both of these happen to matter. You'll have to read it very carefully though. Manufacture of a fertilizer guarantees that with the aid of the fertilizer, 75% of planted seeds will germinate. Suppose the manufacturer is correct. If six seeds planted with the fertilizer were randomly selected, what is the probability that at most three of them germinate? At most means X is going to be less than or equal to three. We have P. This is a binomial distribution. And we have that n is 6. So this is going to be binom CDF 6.75, oops, comma 
It says round to two decimal places. Question 24 of 39. Find the Z value that corresponds to the given area below. Okay, this is gonna be inverse norm, one minus 0 0.0259. All right, so we have it looks like we are going to be way over here at negative 2.12. So this will be normal CDF, big negative number to negative 2.12, and I don't need the mean and standard deviation for this one because it's a standard normal. Make sure you use the negative button, not the subtract button. All right. Doctoral student salaries. Full-time PhD students receive an average of $12,837 per year. If the average salaries are normally distributed with a standard deviation of $1,500, find the probabilities. Part A says student makes more than $14,500. So this is going to be Normal CDF, 14, 500 to a big number with a mean of 12, 837, standard deviation of 1500. Zero point one three three eight. And next up, that the student makes between thirteen thousand and fourteen thousand dollars. Police Academy acceptance exams. In order to qualify for a police academy, applicants are given a test of physical fitness. 
the scores are normally distributed with a mean of 54 and a standard deviation of eight. If only the top 16% of the applicants are selected, find the cutoff score. So, and we are looking only for the top 16%. This means that we are doing inverse norm. One minus point one six. Sixty-two is going to be the cutoff score. Meaning, if someone scores a sixty-two or higher on this test, then they are in the top sixteen percent. And the last one for tonight is going to be problem number twenty-eight. Yeah. The average teacher salary in a certain state is $57,337. Suppose the distribution of salaries is normal with a standard deviation of $7,500. Okay, part A. What is the probability that A, meaning one, randomly selected teacher makes less than $42,000 a year? So this is going to be... normal CDF, and that's going to be negative, a bunch of nines for this one. And because it's only one, our standard deviation does not get messed with. Part B, if we sample 90 teachers, now we have a sample, so we're gonna have to mess with the uh, standard deviation. What is the probability that the sample mean is less than And we have to change the standard deviation by dividing by the square root of the sample size. So in this case, it's 90. Oops. Don't forget to change that standard deviation. And that is going to be the first half. Tomorrow night, I will do the rest of the problems. Otherwise, that is it for tonight, folks.